now to YouTube, Carlos C. Neal, Small Engine Repair and Mobile Service. Hey guys, I'm going to make this, try to make this video quick, but I did want to respond, I guess, however you want to look at it. I really wanted to clear something up. It's not really a response. I guess it's a response, but anyway, there's a guy um, on another channel. Um, I had put out a video that was about uh, parts increase coming and having to mark up your parts and all that kind of stuff. Well, he responded and put a message on uh, our video out in response to mine. Um, and it was Lone Star Mobile Mechanic. Okay. And he subs to me, so he'll probably see this video too. Well, I got another comment um, that, to be honest with you, I erased it. I, 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 blocked the, and I blocked the guy, and I'll tell you why I did. Okay. I felt like the guy who sent this comment, and th let, me, let me tell you the comment first. He said, hey, did you see the comment that Lone Star Mobile Mechanic left you? Um, are you going to respond to it, or are you just going to lay there and take it? Okay. <clears throat> that guy is no longer, uh, I will no longer see his comments, <laughs> okay? Because we're not about drama here, okay? If you're looking for drama, you need to go somewhere else to another channel, because this channel, I'm not going to be out here arguing and and debating back and forth business plans with anybody else that's doing the same thing that's got a small engine repair shop or a channel on here. Um, I'm just not going to do it. That's just not what we're about. Um, but the guy ma made a video, and just to briefly touch on a few things, he said that he didn't mark his parts up. He just li He just makes his living off the labor. Okay, well, he's doing boats and ATVs. I'm sure he works on some mowers, but he kept mentioning boats and ATVs. Okay, well, there is a big price difference in what we do with these small engines like, you know, I mean, well, they're small engines too, but like mowers and stuff like that compared to boats and ATVs. Um, yeah, you can charge more for ATVs and boats. I'm telling you, those ATVs, look guys, I just don't like to do ATVs. I'm in West Virginia, okay? Hatfield McCoy four-wheeler trail is here. I am literally, I could take this camera out, walk around my shop and show you a picture of Summerlee Mountain is what they call it. Summerlee Mountain back there. And that they're turning that into an ATV park. Okay. If I wanted to work on ATVs, I am literally half a mile, three quarters of a mile from, from, from the trail. I don't like working on ATVs. Okay. It's like chainsaws. I don't like working on chainsaws. Yes, I do work on chainsaws every once in a while. Yes, I do work on weed eaters every once in a while. I don't like to take them in, but to appease some customers that are really good customers, that I do all their maintenance on their mowers and stuff like this, they'll bring me stuff. And it ain't like you walk out there and say, I ain't touching that. No, I'm too good to work. I, I don't like working on the. Well, I don't do that. So we do work on some of that stuff. But when it comes to boats and ATVs, people call me, no. I don't I don't have room. I've got eight acres here, but I don't want it filled up with boats on trailers and <clears throat> I'm not gonna do all that. Okay. Also, um so that that's what he does. And I, I'll tell you like this, if you if you like that kind of stuff, if you looking to start a business, maybe doing ATVs and boats and that kind of thing too, you want to add that to your your um resume or whatever, your business plan. Go over and check this guy out again at his Lone Star Mobile Mechanic. Um, but just to kind of, I guess, to respond to some of it, you know, he said he don't mark his parts up. Okay. If you're not a dealer and you go buy your part at a big box store, how are you going to mark your parts up? They're already marked up 100, 200% from what Lowe's and Home Depot, Tractor Supply, Rural King, all that. They're already marked up. There's no meat left on the bone. Of course, you you cannot mark your parts up, okay? The way you mark your parts up is like you buy them cheap and then you mark them up, okay? Like this belt here, for instance. I'm getting ready to put this one on that mower. 35 bucks, okay, is what I sell this belt for. I didn't pay $35 for this belt, but I can just about... And probably I wouldn't even charge thirty five. It's it's like the guy that walks in and wants to buy a belt. I would probably sell this belt for about thirty bucks. You know what I mean? I'm still making money off of it. 
Um, but this year, with the prices going through the roof, now that's old stock. So, you know, we bought that at belt, at belt there. We probably bought it last year sometime. So, um, and I probably bought like 10 or 12 of them at a time. Pretty popular belt. But I can mark that up and still beat the big box stores, okay? Now, I, I want you to understand this, okay? When I'm, when I'm going through these, I'm not saying that I'm right and he's wrong. I'm not saying that he's right and I'm wrong. I'm saying that we got different business plans, okay? He was, I took it as he was giving me advice. Now, um, advice is, you know, any, you should be able to take advice. Anytime that you think that you are too good or you are too smart to take advice from somebody else, well, that shows really just how smart you are because they may have something, they may know something that you don't. So if people wants to give me advice, that's fine. I'll look at it. I ain't saying I'll automatically take it just because it's advice. It might not be good advice. It might be bad. I don't know. But, um, so I didn't take it like, you know, like it. I took it as he was giving me advice. Um, you know, then, um, in one part of it, he said, that I, I kind of put him in a funk. Like I depressed him or something. I brought him down because, you know, of the way I was bringing my video. Well, I never do we want to bring somebody down. Never do we want to depress you or put you in a funk because we made a video on something you know that's not what this channel is about okay this channel is about helping you grow your business start your business and then from there you're gonna have to figure out your own business plan okay um you know i had to take advice last week for a matter of fact um i had a 128 ld trimmer come in here the guy said man i'm telling you all i've done to it was change the filter and the spark plug and now it won't run. Well, you hear that so much. You hear, man, it was running fine last week, and you take it apart, and there ain't no way that thing was running last week. It just ain't no way. It ain't run in a while, okay? Um, so when you hear that kind of stuff, and I thought, okay, well, I tried to start it, and it's sitting idle perfect. As soon as you touch the trigger, it would die. So I thought, okay. Adjusted the carburetor a little bit, nothing. Took the exhaust off of it, nothing. So, okay. Well, the coal's getting hot. It's getting weak, you know. So it dawned on me, well, it's probably something to do with the coal. So I tested the coal. Coal was fine. I was like, man, what the heck is going on with this thing? So a real good friend of mine is um, owns Adams Power Equipment in Beckley, West Virginia. Guys, he is the biggest Husqvarna dealer on the East Coast. And if you want to, if you're ever looking for a mower, or, well, if you can, if you can get them, or parts or whatever, and you're in this area, Holler at Adams Power Equipment, man. I'll give them a shout out. But I called Adam and he just happened to answer the phone, was talking, and he said, Did you try the spark plug? And I was like, I was waiting for, Did you try the muffler bearing? Did you try the canooter valve? Because I was like, Come on, man. I said, Checking the spark plug is like, if it, if it was the spark plug, it's like getting hit by lightning. Okay. I mean, it's my experience is it's never the spark plug. You know, I mean, either it's good or it's not. Well, I thought, well, okay, the guy did say he changed the spark plug. So I pulled the spark plug out of it. Sure enough, it's not a resistor plug. It does not have an R in the number. Bingo. That's exactly what it was. It was the spark plug. So I just happened to call KB or Kyle over at KB Small Engine Repair. He's got a channel. Check him out, too. Um, I, I called him. And I said, you ever heard anything like this, man? He's like, oh, yeah. I was like, really? He's like, yeah. And I was like, well, I'm sure it wasn't in class or something. He said, well, it might have been. I was like, see, see these new guys that's, that's coming along, um, the, the more modern the equipment. Um, it's been a long time, guys, since I've been in any kind of class or anything like that. See, when you run your own business, it's not like working at the dealership. When you work at the dealership, they'll send you on classes. You'll do online classes. They might send you somewhere for two or three days to get certified, like in fuel injection and uh, these new charging systems. Um, and stuff like that to where guys like me, we just got to hack it out and learn it for ourselves, you know? Um, but anyway, I mean, I can take those classes, but I never got time. But anyway, um, and he was telling me about the resistor plugs that they, if there is an R in the number, it's a resistor plug. If not, it interferes with the coal. Basically the same way that when you, in your old cars, uh, you may put a new stereo in your car or change the plugs and you can hear the engine through the speakers. It, it's, it's basically the same thing. It's interfering with the coal. 
put a new spark plug in it that had an R in it, fires right up. Man, run like a champ. <laughs> okay. So I can take advice, guys. I can take it. Okay. And by the way, I think that we need to start putting a little pressure on, on Kyle over at KB Small Engine Repair so that uh, he'll do us a video and give us a little class there on the resistor plugs. I think that would be good for everybody. So Kyle, come on, man. Where's the video at? <laughs> I'm going to throw him under the bus. But anyway, um, everybody starts sending messages over to his videos. Hey, man, tell us more about these resistor plugs. It'd be pretty good. <clears throat> and, okay, uh, so we, we you know, never want to put anybody in a funk and always take advice, all that. See, we got a business plan here. And this is the difference between me and the guy from Texas, that mobile, Lone Star Mobile Mechanic. We just got different business plans, guys. You know, it's not that he's right and I'm wrong or I'm wrong and he's right uh, or vice versa. It doesn't matter, okay? Um, it's just a different business plan. I have a, I had, we had a business plan of five years that in five years we was going to start it right here in this little shop. And in five years we wanted to be a, have a dealership, you know, sell mowers, the whole schmo, right? Well, Corona put a damper on that. And then we thought, well, last year I thought, well, I'll just build me a bigger building back here, 20 by 20 or 20 by 24 or something like that and you know and, and do it that way and use this as a parts room well guess what that's not going to happen either because i'm not giving 10 grand for a building okay i'm not putting all that i'm not going to do that not for a 20 by 20. so what we're going to do is we're going to build onto this building we're going to take it out eight feet and back out eight feet this year out back the other way another eight to maybe 16 feet that way next year. So just build on to what we got. It's a lot cheaper. I can do each side for around two grand. You know what I mean? Beats anything else. But anyway, so it's just a different business plan. Like I said, it doesn't mean that I'm right and he's wrong or I'm wrong and he's right. It, it, it's just, it doesn't matter that. Um, he did say a few things on there. Um, one was, um, you know, that I shouldn't quit doing what I'm doing with the public because uh, somebody has to be around that, you know, people can take this equipment to and, and get it fixed and, and get it fixed right and to help them, uh, help the customer. Okay. First off, I'm trying to think of an easy way to say this. Um, for me, okay, for me, it's not all about the customer, okay? I mean, I know that sounds bad. Guys, let's just be truthful, okay? It's not always about the customer. It's just not. Your CNL Small Engine Repair is not a nonprofit organization. This is how I make a living. And we've, we've done pretty well so far. So I'm doing okay. Um, the video that I made wasn't like, oh my gosh, I'm starving to death. No, we're doing good. We're just not making what was projected because we didn't mark up our parts. Um, we lost money doing that. We didn't lose money. We just didn't make what we should have made. Um, but the way I look at it, if, if we do stop dealing with the public and we go all warranty, then it's still helping the the customer out because when that guy brings that mower into a, a, a shop, like if you've got if you've got a piece of warranty work and it comes into the shop, I'm not 100 sure I'm moving that forward. Um, you know, it may be 50 lawnmowers back. It may be 10 lawnmowers back. I don't know how many I've got in here at the time. So if all I'm doing is warranty, then I'm getting equipment back to the customer that at no fault of his own, his equipment broke down. Okay. Look at it this way. This guy's under warranty. He didn't do anything to his mower wrong. He just was using the mower and something broke. Okay, something went wrong. To where the guy that's got a mower that's 10 years old, you know, and he broke it himself, like hitting a stump and busted a spindle off of it, being a blade, he left old gas in it, carburetor's gummed up, he ain't changed the oil in five years, and now the compression's low, and... It's wore out and it's knocking and he doesn't bend a push rod or burn a valve or he he, he, he didn't check and make sure that, uh, you know, a mouse didn't build a nest on top of the head and, and warp the head. And 
<laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, it's just, there's just so much out there and you can look at it either way you want to, but it's just a different business plan. Again, this guy was, I did not take it as he was calling me out. He was just trying to give me advice. Um, so don't, don't quite look at it like, like that guys, you know, don't one, he, he's another, uh, he, he's a Christian too. So uh, another brother or sister in Christ, I'm not going to argue with these people. I'm not going to get into it with them. You know, God bless him, man. I hope that his business just takes off and flourishes, man. And the Lord just blesses him coming in and going out. I mean, it's just that good, you know? Um, but, uh, yeah, there's going to be no drama here. Nobody called nobody out. I'm not calling him out. He's not calling me out. There ain't going to be no debate. There ain't going to be none of that. I'm just responding to, and really not responding to his video. I'm pretty much more or less responding to the guy who sent the video, the, the message to me saying, are you just going to lay there and take it? Well, it, it, if I did, it, do, it doesn't bother me. It shouldn't bother you either. You know what I mean? So anyway, guys, listen, I just wanted to make this video and make it kind of as quick as I could. I see we're for like 16 minutes or something. So I'm going to get off here. I got stuff to do. But um, no matter what you do, guys, I'll go over there. And like I said, go over there and check his channel out. And you can even watch the video on his channel. It's called Lone Star Mobile Mechanic. Um Anyway, uh, he did say one one thing though that that really stuck with me. He said, "If you take big bites, you got to swallow big bites," and that's true. Um, so just remember that, guys. If you jump in to to something, you know, and and you're taking a big bite of something, and you're really wanting to grow your business, just remember there's there's consequences that come, actions that come with growing, trying to grow your business. He said, well, you know, we was growing it too, was trying to go too fast. Well, that's, I don't think so. I mean, like I said, we had a five year plan in five years, you know, we should be where we want to be. And we was going to be, I'll be honest with you guys. We were doing really good on our business plan, man. We were sticking right to it. My wife had to hold me down a few times from taking too big a bite. Um, but we're at the position now to where we can take bigger bites just because we've been in this longer, you know, for a while. So anyway, I just wanted to put that out there. Anyway, God bless you, everybody. No matter what you do, if you do it, uh, if you're going to do it, do it for the glory of God, or it's not worth doing. Till next time, CNL's out.